Hello team players. As of recording this video, the Seven Dooms for Sandpoint module comes out in two days. And I wanted to get at least one more teamwork build on this channel before that happens. So today we're building the Firestorm Manipulator. Let's dive in. So since we're trying to come as close as possible to creating a Firestorm, and that kind of requires fire and air abilities, what better class to take for this build than the Kineticists? And of course we're going to be taking Dual Gate, because otherwise we can't get both elements. For Ancestry, we do want to take a few air abilities, but we're mostly going to lean into that fire, which means the Human Ifrit is perfect for this build. And of course, for background, we're going to be going with Lost Coast Local. This gives us training in society and sandpoint lore. In addition, we gain the Hobnobber skill feat. In addition, increase the party's reputation with the Townsfolk by one, and reduce the party's reputation with the Scarnetti Consortium by one. If you're unaware, those are factions in sandpoints. You will be interacting with them in this module. Since we're dual gate, we're going to get two impulses. One air and one fire at level one. And of course, we're also going to get a basic kinesis feat. For our basic kinesis feat, we're going to go with versatile blasts. This allows us to change our damage on our kinetic blast cold. As you might run into some creatures that are weak to cold damage and not your other two elements. Moving on, we'll be taking four winds as our air impulse. With this, for two actions, we can repel up to four creatures. Each of those creatures can stride up to half their speed. And when we get to 10th level, we can propel them up to their full speed. This is one of the best air impulses there is. You can allow your allies to move during your turn so they don't have to during their turn. Or at least not as far. And for a tank build, like my Ancient Guardian I did last time, this can be huge. This is definitely something you want to use if you go first, and then maybe do a one-action kinetic blast. For our Fire Impulse at level 1, we're going to take Burning Jets. While this build can do melee kinetic blasts, it's better off using ranged. So if we can get away from enemies that are right next to us, all the better. Especially if we start right next to one. For two actions, we can stride 40 feet. And not only that, but this ignores difficult terrain and doesn't trigger reactions. For our Ancestry feet at level 1, we're going to take what I consider to be the best first level human feet, Cooperative Nature. Plus 4 on aid checks. Pretty nice. Okay, for level 2, we're going to take Whispers on the Wind. This allows us to essentially cast Message, but only on creatures that are surrounded by air. Being able to strategize during combat without enemies knowing about it is huge. And this allows us to have simple strategies with our party members even during combat. And the best part is this impulse starts with a range of 500 feet and can even go planetary plus the plane of air eventually. Making this a fantastic communication tool. This module only goes to level 11, so you're not going to get planetary. But... Being able to communicate with people up to a mile away is pretty big. For our general feats, of course, you're going to want to take the standard Die Hard Toughness and Kenny Acumen for your will saves. And you also want to take Fleet for a little more speed and Untrained Improvisation since Kinesis don't get many skills. For our level 4 feat, we're going to take Thermal Nimbus. When we use this impulse, choose Cold or Fire. Allies in your kinetic aura gain resistance equal to your level to the chosen damage type. In addition, any creature that starts its turn in your aura or moves into your aura during its turn takes damage equal to half your level of the chosen type. And this does stack with any of your elemental resistances from your gate junction. This effectively means that only your enemies take the damage when they're in your aura as your allies are more resistant to it. I do highly recommend this feat if you're a fire kineticist. We're essentially creating a firestorm around ourselves in our kinetic aura, so it fits this bell too. 
for Teamwork Report number one. This build is designed to do two main things. The first is hit enemy weaknesses. Now yes, I am aware that my Thaumaturge build that I did last time can hit weaknesses too. But if multiple people can hit weaknesses, it's always good. The second thing this build is designed to do is help the Thaumaturge deal with flying and ranged enemies. As our Ancient Guardian will be slow. Unfortunately, this build is going to have to do most of the work when it comes to flying enemies. As our Ancient Guardian really can't do that very well. But as for ranged enemies on the ground, that's where four winds comes in. As now our tank can move on our turn rather than just his turn. And that's kind of a big deal. In addition, this build can give a few resistances to allies. If you're going up against a creature that can do cold or fire damage, Thermal Nimbus is what you want to use. Or if you just want to do the type of damage to enemies for being near you. Which is another way this build can help the team. At this level, anyway. And finally, Cooperative Nature we want to use when we're facing flying enemies. As that will make it easier for our Thaumaturge to hit those flying enemies with ranged attacks. In fact, that may make our Ancient Guardian even better at ranged attacks than it would be with melee attacks. Which again, is a pretty big deal. Okay, we are a kineticist, that means we get an impulse at level 5, and we also get a gate junction. For our impulse, we're going to go with Air Shroud. This gives ranged attacks a minus 1 penalty if they go through our kinetic aura. Not only does this protect us from ranged attacks, but it also means that any enemies that try to shoot past us through our kinetic aura are also going to take a minus. Which means if allies are behind us, the enemy is going to have a hard time hitting them too. For our gate junction, we're going to go with the air aura junction. This means that we always have a plus 10 bonus to our speed, and any allies that start in our kinetic aura also gain this for one turn. And this includes a fly speed if they have one, which is another way that this kinesis can help out our thaumaturg. For our ancestry feat at this level, I ended up taking Noble Resolve. This gives us a plus one bonus on Will saving throws against mental effects. Will is going to be our lowest save, pretty much no matter what. So getting a plus one to mental effects is going to be pretty good. But more importantly, regardless of whether we succeed or fail on our Will save, we immediately know who tried to cast that mental effect on us. Which means we can immediately target them and let our allies know that that creature has mental effects. Which is helpful in and out of combat. Moving on to level 6, we'll be taking Volcanic Escape. This is an overflow impulse, but if an enemy within your kinetic aura damages you, you can use a reaction to make that enemy take fire damage. When you use this reaction, you can also leap up to half your speed. This doesn't trigger reactions. We do want to be ranged in this build, and this is a great incentive for enemies not to attack you, at least not in melee. With two element infusion, we can make our elemental blast both electricity and fire. Thus, we can still do good damage if the target is resistant to one element, but not the other. As sometimes, the party is going to fail at that recall knowledge check. So even if we don't know that the target is immune to fire... We can still do good damage to it with our Elemental Blast, thanks to the electricity half of our Elemental Blast. The damage of this Elemental Blast is calculated before any other calculation. So having doubling, resistances, weaknesses, all that is after we total up the damage. At level 9, we do get another Impulse, and we're going to take Kindle Inner Flame. Yes, this is another stance, so we're going to have to decide between Air Shroud and this. This is kind of an offensive and defensive option, as allies in our kinetic aura gain a plus one bonus to reflex saves and acrobatics check. They can also step as a free action once per round. The offensive part of this is that if anyone in your kinetic aura takes a move action, then they deal an extra to fire damage with all their strike. If you take this build beyond level 11, 
Then at level 12, they get the flaming rune on their strikes rather than just two extra fire damage. This is mainly so that more than our Thaumaturge can hit fire weaknesses. And the plus one to reflex saves is going to help as well. This won't stack with Esoteric Warden from our Thaumaturge build, but Esoteric Warden only works once per day per creature. So this is going to help him after that. For our Gate Junction in level 9, we're going to be taking the Fire Aura Junction. This gives enemies in our Kinetic Aura weakness fire equal to half our level if we hit them with fire impulses. Meaning at this point, our Thaumaturge build will always be able to hit a mortal weakness when they use Exploit Vulnerability. For our level 9 Ancestry feat, we're going to be taking Cooperative Soul. This means as long as we're an expert in the skill that our ally is using, we can no longer fail or critically fail on aid checks. Unfortunately, this won't work on attack rolls, but it is something we can use outside of combat. Granted, as a kineticist, we aren't going to have many skills. But, we are going to be expert in some skills, so this could be useful. And, of course, for a level 10, we're going to be taking Chain Infusion. This essentially allows us to hit more than one enemy with our Kinetic Blasts. We can hit it up to five times, but we can't hit the same enemy more than once. For free archetype for this build, just about any archetype that can give you an animal companion or summon things is going to help this build a lot. As not only will that give the Thaumaturge a flanking partner, but it also means that your animal companion or summon can protect you. Because the Thaumaturge can only really deal with one enemy at a time. So Beastmaster, Undead Master, Ranger, Druid, or even Summoner are all great options for free archetype with this belt. If you pick Druid, it really doesn't matter which order you end up going with, because all Druids can summon things. As for Summoner, the Eidolon doesn't matter either, because again, you can summon things. I, of course, went with Druid, because our Wisdom is high enough to do that. So if you end up going Summoner, you may want to switch out your Charisma with your Wisdom at the start of this belt. Champion can also work, but the Champion doesn't have many feats, that work with this belt. But if you're more interested in being a melee kinesis build, then champion may be the free archetype for you. As getting a animal companion through the champion dedication can help a melee version of this belt as well. But overall, if you've got free archetype, get yourself a pet. Alright, for teamwork report number two. This build is meant for support and for hitting enemies that are far away. Remember that both of our Kinetic Blasts have a range of 60 feet, which means this build can hit enemies even if they're significantly higher above us. And this build can help all of our allies hit enemy weaknesses and not just our Thaumaturge and ourselves, thanks to our Fire or a Junction, as well as Kindle Inner Flames. But a lot of these impulses are going to be defensive options, which is fine because we do have offensive options as well. I want to give a special thanks to Daniel Landis and Underhill for supporting the channel. I also want to let you guys know that I did change some of my tiers on my Patreon page. Now if you pledge at Team Leader or higher, you can get my videos ad-free a day early. You can also get my videos a day early if you become a member of this channel. But if you want to learn about the Thaumaturge build that goes with this build, you can check out this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, teamwork is vital. It helps us solve problems.